Hi there. I'm one of the reference librarians here at the ULM Library. I'm the reference librarian for the health sciences, so if you need help with uh, occupational therapy or other such classes, you can contact me at niemla at ulm.edu. In this video, I'm going to go over some of the uh, research resources that you can use at our library um, for research projects or for just getting more information about certain things. You can find the ULM Library homepage at ulm.edu slash library. You can also find this link under the menus, like under Academics. Once you reach the ULM Library, um, you might notice that we have um, a variety of different resources for different purposes. And so if you don't necessarily know where to start, uh, you can find help with that by looking under Databases by Subject or asking us for help uh, under the Need Help Ask button here, and you can ask us a question with our email form. You can also reach me, Karen Niemla, and other reference librarians by clicking on Reference Librarians and finding us by name or by the particular subject that we're a li liaison for. For this class, you'll probably want to look under Databases by Subject, and here you can find our Health Sciences related databases. Firstly, when logging in from at home, the login process is different than it would be from on campus. When you're logging into the library from an off campus location, the way that you enter the databases is the same as it is from on campus. You should always enter the library databases from ulm.edu slash library, even when you're on campus, just to make sure that you're being authenticated to the databases that we subscribe to. So if you go to databases by name and maybe, for instance, select something like uh, Art Store. If you click on it, you'll be asked to log in, and this login page typically does not appear from on campus. So you put in your campus-wide ID and your birth month and year represented in four digits. So if you were born in, say, January of 1922, your number would be 01. Two, two. So once you have that entered, click Authenticate. And once it loads up, you'll be able to search the database. This is the way it typically is for almost all of our uh, databases from off campus. Which resource you use depends on what it is you're looking for. If you know the name of the book or the journal that you're trying to find, the best place to look is in the library catalog here in the gray box, because this is a catalog of everything that we have um, by the main title. So we'll have our journal titles in there, but you, there wouldn't be an article title in there. You want to look for the journal uh, in which the article uh, has been printed or for the book title. And I can ask it if I want a periodical, or if I'm searching by an author, or a particular subject, or a title of a book. In this case, I'm going to look for periodical title, and look for journal of counseling. And we'll see what comes up. So we have the Journal of Humanistic Counseling, Journal for Social Action in Counseling, Psychology Journal, and some other things that came up with that search. So it's the Journal of College Counseling. So let's say hypothetically that I wanted to read that. I can click on it and it'll tell me which databases have that and what years are available. So it looks like we have 1998 up until the most recent year. And that's usually done to uh, save money on these uh, subscriptions. So I'll just click on one of these and it should open up in a browser. Here we go. And it shows me uh, the years that we have and I can open up one of these issues. So if you had a citation where you were looking for um, volume 10, issue one, then this is here how you would find it. Then I can uh, quickly get to the full text or uh, look at other tools for the journal article.
The other search box on our homepage is great for when you're looking for something on a certain subject, but it doesn't need to be a particular book or a particular journal. By default, this has full text and peer reviewed selected, but you can uncheck those if you want. So you could get things that aren't peer reviewed like um, magazines and newspapers or get things that aren't available in full text if you just want to see what was available. However, it's best to keep these checked um, when you're searching for journals because then you can get things that we uh, have available right away and things that are scholarly peer reviewed journals. If you don't know what a scholarly peer reviewed journal is, it's a um, academic publication that has been um, checked for um, veracity. So, so it's not just something uh, where it's published in a newspaper and a and a uh, editor gets to look over it and they see whether or not it can be published. But these articles have been looked over by um, several people um, before they were published. So I'm going to do a quick search for something like thallium poison. Here on the results list, we can see some more of those limiters where I could say uh, full text scholarly peer reviewed journals. You can also um, look for different things. You can narrow it down by year if it's important to have something uh, new or old. And we can also say more about what subjects we want. Because these subject terms here have been written by um, humans rather than um, how, how a robot like finds different um, words in a article and then brings back that article saying this is probably relevant to you. These ones have been um, human produced so that um, when you use these subject terms, um, you'll get more uh, relevant results. So I could click on this and we'll see what the uh, abstract has to say. The abstract will let you know um, generally what the article is about and so you can read that and see if it has anything to do with the kind of research you're doing. And if you look at the uh, right hand side here there are several tools that you can use to um, save these citations or to save the article. Um, you can email it to yourself with the email option and it can even put the PDF there as an attachment. You can click this yellowish document here and you can get pre-made citations that you can copy and paste into Word or wh whatever it is you're using to write your paper. Um, these won't always be 100% correct, but they um, are pretty useful in that they're a good way to start, so you may need to check them over um, before you turn your paper in. There's also an export function, so if you're using a um, citation manager program like EndNote or Zotero, these can be uh, exported to your program and then you can make your citations that way if you choose to do so. Another way to um, uh, save these for later is to use this permalink here and you'll get this permalink which is a URL that always comes back to the record for this particular article. And it's important to note that the URL that appears here in the address bar like in most web pages this up here is a bunch of database um, gobbledygook, so to speak, um, that is just here to generate the page at the moment, but it's not always going to lead back to this page. So if you want to uh, save URLs or bookmark something, you're probably going to want to bookmark this URL instead of the one that's up there. And if you want to view the article, you can just click on it and there's the full text and you can uh, download it using the download function in your browser although it's not going to look the same in every browser this is Chrome um, but depending on what PDF reader you have you should be able to have a uh, icon or an option that will let you download the article and save it if you so desire. EBSCO Discovery is not the only database that you'll need and there are others you'll need to look into and EBSCO Discovery um, does not search all of the databases that we have. So if we look under databases by subject and open up health sciences, we can see a collection of databases that would be useful for occupational therapy. I won't be going over all of these databases, but I'll be covering the ones that'll be most relevant to you. If we look under Access Pharmacy, this is a database that is actually for the pharmacy program, but it has information about um, prescription drugs 
and uh, illicit drugs that might be useful if you need to know quickly something about a particular drug in relation to uh, someone's therapy and how someone's um, prescriptions might um, help or hinder uh, what it is that they're doing. Credo Literati is a reference books database that contains things like dictionaries and encyclopedias and handbooks and things that would normally appear in a uh, reference print collection. And these are all books that uh, exist in print, they're not pretend books or anything like that. And so if you're looking for something to cite um, that isn't Wikipedia, uh, this is a pretty good place to go. So I'm going to do a quick search for pronation, which is a term that not everybody knows. So there's pronation in the Royal Society of Medicine Health Encyclopedia, medical terms, biology. So actually I'm going to click this one first and see what it says. Applying to the hand and the arm, any forms at the palm, the opposite of pronation is supination. All right. So if I wanted to hold on to this def this uh, definition, uh, I can get the um, URL and uh, some pre-made citations down here. Um, again, these are machine produced, they're not, so they're not always going to be 100% correct, but they are pretty good. Uh, the Directory of Open Access Journals is one of the free resources we have, and it um, can be viewed at any time online. It has free journals from all around the world, um, not all of which are in English, so if you're not a native English speaker, you can maybe find some journals in here that are your um, chosen language. So I'm going to do a quick search for ankle strength and see what journal articles come up. So this is the Journal of Neuroengineering Rehabilitation. And we have some in here that are, um, again, not in English, but we can actually ask for um, languages. I can actually say I just want English ones. The human, medical human genetics, strength training versus chest physical therapy on pulmonary functions in children with Down syndrome. So let's say hypothetically that I wanted to see that. I can just click it. It gives me the abstract and I can click on the full text to get the full article. We've already discussed the EBSCOhost databases because all of those are covered in uh, EBSCO Discovery on the homepage. However, EBSCO eBooks is different. In EBSCO eBooks, um, it only searches the eBooks collection and you get an interface that is uh, a bit more eBook friendly where we can see the covers and also search inside the text of the books. So you could hypothetically find a book that has a chapter on something that you're writing about but it doesn't necessarily have to be the whole book and you don't have to sit down and read the whole book you can just get to the parts that you need so i'm going to do a quick search for hmm muscle uh, fatigue we'll try that so we have some things like Gulf War and Health, Treatment for Chronic Multisymptom Illness, Principles of Kinesiology, Multiple Sclerosis, Childhood Muscle Bone and Joint Pain, Rheumatic Diseases and the Latest Treatments. That sounds interesting, so I'll click on that. And its description will tell you generally what the book is about. But we can also look at the PDF full text up here and get right into it. The PDF full text is um, a lot quicker, and uh, you can just view it right in the browser. And again, these are all um, real books. They're not pretend books or um, fake books or anything like that. They're just real books that are available in ebook form. If you click on search within up here, you can look for a certain word. So if I needed to know about muscle problems, I can search for the word and it'll take me right to the um, page that mentions it. And so this is a quick way to get around and find things that you might need, or you can search for something else and find that in the book. Some of you may have already heard of Google Scholar. 
Google Scholar is a way to find uh, articles online using Google, except that the problem is that you may not necessarily know what it is you have full text access to or not, because you might find an article, but it might not be free to look at, and you'll run into a paywall asking for like $50 or something like that. But um, there is a way to tell Google to let you know if something's available at our library. And so to do that, you just go to the regular Google Scholar, um, which is uh, scholar.google.com, and go up to settings here, and go to library links, and here it's already selected because I've done this before, but you can do a quick search for Munro, and that'll appear among the results. So I'm going to say Univ of Louisiana Monroe, save, and now I can do a search for something like therapy injury and here um, I find journal articles but not only that um, if they're available in full text somewhere um, Google Scholar will let you know so here's one that's available in full text and there's also one here from Univ Louisiana at Monroe Learning Express Library is different from the other databases in that it's not necessarily for research, but it can be very useful for career planning or if studying for tests. It's one of the only databases we have that requires you to create an original login, and so if you need to do that, you can click register here to make your login. And I already have one, so I'm going to use mine. For instance, if you were looking to study for the MCAT in the future, I'll just do a quick search for that. You can uh, get a bunch of um, tests and ebook tools and other things that can help you uh, pass your test and study for it. Nursing and Allied Health Source and Dissertations and Theses are actually the same database, but they're listed separately because there's only uh, a couple things we have in ProQuest. So in Nursing um, and Allied Health Source, you can find a variety of journals. Um, quite a few actually, making it such that it's kind of an overlooked database, even though there's quite a lot for um, medical professions in here, and certainly for therapy. So if I could look for something like therapy elbow, like if I'm looking for something that specific. I'm looking for full text peer-reviewed. Let's see what comes up. All right. Hand therapy following elbow relief for passive elbow flexion and long head of the triceps transfer for active elbow flexion in children with amyoplasia, I'm going to guess. So this is in the journal of hand therapy. As in, yes, there's a whole journal that just covers nothing but the hand, which actually makes a lot of sense. So if I, let's say hypothetically I wanted to look at this one about tennis elbow. I can just click on it, and this one's available in uh, HTML full text, so you can just see it on the page right away. Um, if you want the PDF, you can look here. There we go. And I can um, save that just like the ones in EBSCO. There are some citation tools up here, so if I click on Cite, I can get some pre-made citations in um, various formats, and like the others, you can copy and paste those into Word. Back on the results page, we can also see that we have like 9,000 something results just for searching for therapy and elbow. And so just like in the EBSCO databases, we can divide it up by subject or by date. So if I open this up, I can ask for something more specific like um, humans. That will be probably pretty important. Additionally, ProQuest is our top uh, resource for dissertations and theses. And dissertations and theses go under a certain kind of review, but it's not the same kind of review as uh, scholarly peer-reviewed journals. So when you do a scholarly peer-reviewed journal search, uh, these resources are not going to show up. And so these are papers that um, students have written um, and some of them are uh, from ULM. ULM is, uh, are kept in here, uh, as well as other schools. So if I wanted to do a search for something like um, therapy students physical, we'll see what comes up. So 
You have uh, effective monitoring physical therapy approaches for residency training. Physical therapist students as moral agents during clinical experiences. Role of tobacco and counseling physical therapy practice and education. And so let's say hypothetically that I wanted to read this one. I can just uh, cool. Uh, click on that. So the role of tobacco cessation, counseling, and physical therapist practice and education. And these are very large documents usually, so it takes a moment or two for them to load. And so there's your PDF full text. And so if you're thinking of um, writing a thesis or dissertation, um, having a look at what's already out there can be helpful or um, it can be helpful to see what it looks like um, when they're finished. So although Nursing and Allied Health Source is not just for nurses, um, the Nursing Reference Center may be a bit more useful to nurses, but it also contains material that may be relevant to um, physical therapists. So if I do a quick search in here for something like ankle uh, pronation, which is something specific, I can get these results. There's 11. And I can click on maybe this article here, like Achilles tendinopathy, that explains um, some of the problems that people can have with their uh, Achilles tendon. We've gone over most of the databases you would need to do your research here at the ULM Library, but we're not quite done yet. If you look under government publications, you'll find information about our government uh, collections, but also about USA.gov. And USA.gov is a website you can go to anywhere at any time. It's free. You can find a link here. And this searches uh, federal, state, and local governments. So I could try searching something like Occupational Therapist Louisiana. Because maybe they'll tell me if there's any state resources about that. Okay. So it looks like we have optional, occupational therapist and assistance law stuff. I guess from the State Board of Medical Examiners. Licenses that you need to get. Let's see, occupational therapists. Alright, there, so there's a application process, I guess, to get licensed for that. And so this is important information that you would need to know. But let's say if you were looking for some other state or thinking of working somewhere else, then you might need to look up information as to what's going to be expected of you in that other state. If you need some help with citation styles, you can look under Guides and Tutorials. And here you can find some information about how to avoid plagiarism and some style type tutorials on APA and MLA. Um, but the best place to look is actually the Owl at Purdue, which is linked down here. Um, you can also find it by Googling the Owl at Purdue. And this is an, a free to use online style guide. And there are different kinds of styles that are covered here, but the main ones on the homepage are APA and MLA. So if you look under APA style, you can get uh, some example pages and uh, an example paper to show you what your paper is supposed to look like as well as giving you uh, examples on how to do your references in your reference list. Thanks for watching this video. If you have any more questions, you can contact me, Karen Niemla, at N-I-E-M-L-A at ULM.edu. And you can ask me any questions or uh, set up a time to meet with me if you like. I'm also available on Skype if you uh, schedule a time too, so either there or in my office. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know and um, good luck with your studies.